No man's life can be encompassed in one telling. There is no way to give each year its justified weight, to include each event, each of the elders, friends, and other people who helped to shape a lifetime. What can be done is to be faithful in spirit to the record and to try to find one's way to the heart of the man. A man who is the representative of God on earth for these turbulent times through which our world is passing. A man about whom God himself revealed over a hundred years ago to the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, on a number of times. In December 1907, God told the promised Messiah, I am with you, O Masrur. In January 1907, the promised Messiah wrote, I saw in my dream my son Sharif Ahmad, who was wearing a turban, and there were two men standing near him. One of them pointing to him said, Here comes the king. And the other one said, He has yet to be the judge first. On the 28th of May 1907, God revealed, Allah has made him Amir, contrary to expectation. On the 10th of January 1907, the promised Messiah said, A few years back, I had said in a vision about my son Sharif Ahmad, Now you sit down in my place, and I shall leave. These revelations were fulfilled by the progeny of Hadrat Mirza Sharif Ahmad, in the person of Hadrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi V, the present head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And this is the story of his life. In his Friday sermon of the 8th of September 1950, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi II said, The promised Messiah said that I am departing, but God will send the second manifestation for you. But our Lord does not only have the second manifestation, he has the third manifestation as well. And he does not only have the third manifestation, he has the fourth manifestation also, followed by the fifth and the sixth manifestation. And thus the hand of God will keep showing this miracle to the world. He further said, The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, once said that when religion will be in danger, God will send a few people of Persian descent to defend it. The promised Messiah was one of them, and so am I. And it is also possible that under this prophecy there may be others of the Persian descent who will be sent to uphold the magnificence of religion and to strengthen its foundations. Just a few days after this faith-inspiring address, God sent to this world Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad, who was born on the 15th of September 1950 in Rabwa, Pakistan, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community's headquarters. He is the great-grandson of the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hadrat Mirza Khulam Ahmad, the promised Messiah, and the grandson of the youngest son of the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Sharif Ahmad Sahib, and the maternal grandson of Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi II. He is the son of Hadrat Sahibzada Mirza Mansur Ahmad and Hadrat Sahibzadi Nasir Begum. Sahibzada Mirza Masru Ahmad completed his primary education at the Talimul Islam High School, Rabwa, and obtained his BA from the Talimul Islam College, Rabwa, Pakistan. In 1976, he earned his Master's of Science degree in Agricultural Economics from the Agriculture University, Faisalabad, Pakistan. At the tender age of 17, he signed up for Vasiyat, or the will, under the plan initiated by the promised Messiah, thus committing a portion, not less than one-tenth of his lifetime earnings and any property, to the cause of Islam. He got married on the 31st of January 1977, to Sayyid Amutus Sabu Begum Sahiba, daughter of Zayed Daud Muzaffa Shah Sahib and Sahib Zadi Amatul Hakim Begum. He is blessed with two children, a daughter, Sahib Zadi Amatul Varis Fateh, who is married to Fateh Ahmad Dahiri Sahib of Nawabsha, and a son, Sahib Zada Mirza Vakas Ahmad, who is married to Sahib Zadi Hibatur Rauf. 
In 1977, Sahib Zada Mirza Masroor Ahmad devoted his life for Islam and proceeded to Ghana under the Nasrat Yahan scheme. This social, educational and economic development scheme, initiated by Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi III, supports a large number of hospitals and schools in West Africa. He was the founding principal of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School Salaga in the northern region of Ghana, where he served for two years. Under his devoted care and guardianship, the school went steadily forward. His success at the school made him the obvious choice for the principal of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School at Isadcha in the central region of Ghana, where he served for a further four years. He was then appointed as the manager of the Ahmadiyya Agricultural Farm in Dapali in the northern region of Ghana for two years, during which he successfully planted and nurtured wheat as an economic crop for the first time in that country. This was exhibited at an international trade fair and the results were submitted to the Ministry of Agriculture of Ghana. It stands as a great credit to his personal efforts in those experiments that successive presidents of Ghana have commended the Ahmadiyya Muslim community for these highly successful experiments, which revolutionized the country's economy and paved the way for self-sufficiency. In 1985, he returned to Pakistan, and on the 17th of March 1985, he was appointed as Wakilul Malsani, that is, Departmental in Charge of Financial Affairs. On the 18th of June 1994, he was appointed as Director of Education. In August 1988, he was appointed as President Bahishti Makbara and Majlis Karpadaz, which is the Executive Committee managing the Celestial Graveyard and its related matters. From 1994 to 1997, he was Chairman Nasser Foundation. At the same time, he served as the president of the organization responsible for the beautification of Rabva, the international headquarters of the community. He expanded the Gulshane Ahmad nursery, and his personal efforts led to reforming Rabva from its barren to its lush green image. Sahib Zadeh Mirza Masru Ahmad also served as a member of the Qada the Jurisprudence Board of the Community, from 1988 to 1995. In central Khuddamul Ahmadiyya, an auxiliary organization of the community comprising of men between 15 and 40 years of age, Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad served under various capacities, such as the secretary responsible for the physical health of members, secretary for census and membership records, secretary for external chapters, and the vice president of the organization from 1976 to 1990. In central Majlis Ansarullah, an auxiliary organization of the community comprising men over 40 years of age, Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad served as the secretary responsible for the intellectual progress and physical health of the members during the 1995 term and as the secretary for Quranic education for the terms from 1995 to 1997. On the 10th of December 1997, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV, may Allah have mercy on him, appointed him as Nazir Allah, that is, the Chief Executive Director of Sada Anjuman Ahmadiyya Pakistan and the Amir of Rabwa. <laughs> इनके सरदार मिर्ज़ा मुसल्ला में साहब को बनाया है तो मेरा इस इल्हाम की तरफ भी ध्यान फिरा कि गोया आप अब ये कह रहे हैं तू मेरी जगह बैठ He filled this office with distinction for over 5 years until his election of Khalifa Tulmasi the 5th In administrative matters and a disciplined approach to work he has no parallel he has the unique quality of getting down to the heart of the matter and dealing with it squarely. While he served as the chief executive director of Sadr Anjuman Ahmadiyya, an office which involved the discharge of heavy responsibilities at the center of the organizational pattern of the movement, he was ready to serve in whatever capacity he was called upon. During this period, he also served as the director for hospitality and, in addition, as the director responsible for agricultural matters. In 1999, 
He had the honor of becoming a prisoner in the name of Allah in Rabwa, Pakistan. He was imprisoned on the 30th of April, pursuant to the continuing religious persecution through the inhumane religious persecution laws under Section PPC 295B for being the person in charge of the Central Administration Office. He was released on the 10th of May, 1999. Hadrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmesi IV, passed away at his residence in London at 9.30 a.m. on the 19th of April 2003. Over 40,000 members of the community converged in London. In conformity with the constitution of the community's electoral college, under the chairmanship of Chaudhry Hamidullah Sahib, Executive Director Tariqa Jadid, a meeting of the Electoral College, which was convened on the 22nd of April, after Isha prayers for the purpose of electing the new Khalifa. The meeting was held behind closed doors at the Fazl Mosque, London. As the mosque doors were closed for the meeting, a hush descended over the thousands of members of the community who thronged the surrounding streets. This time was spent by everyone in humble and earnest supplication to the Divine that the members of the Electoral College may be rightly guided in their choice of the successor to Khalifa Tulmasi IV. The whole scene was broadcast live to millions across the world via MTA International. The college met in a deeply prayerful mood. Pursuant to the rules and regulations of the college, each member took an oath of allegiance to the Hilafate Ahmadiyya and then proceeded to the process of election. At 11.40 p.m., the silence ended. The thousands waiting on site and the millions watching on MTA International heard the microphone crackle to life, and Imam Ataul Majib Rashid, the secretary to the Electoral College, made the announcement. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmuduhu wa Nusalli ala Rasulihil Kareem, wa ala Abduhil Masihil Maud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. تمام احباب جماعت ہائے احمدیہ کی اطلاع کے لیے اعلان کیا جاتا ہے کہ آج مورخا 22 اپریل سن 2003 بروز منگل بعد نماز مغرب و عشاء مسجد فضل لندن میں سیدنا حضرت خلیفت المسیح سانی المسلح المعود رضی اللہ عنہ کی مقرر کردہ مجلس انتخاب خلافت کا اجلاس بس صدارت محترم چودری حمید اللہ صاحب منعقد ہوا جس میں حسب قوائد ہر رکن نے خلافت احمدیہ سے وابستگی کا حلف اٹھایا اور اس کے بعد مکرم و محترم صاحب زادہ مرزا مسرور احمد صاحب سلمہو ربہو کو خلیفت المسیح منتخب کیا عراقین اے عراقین مجلس انتخاب خلافت نے اسی وقت حضرت امیر المومنین خلیفت المسیح الخامس حیدہ اللہ تعالی بنصرح العزیز و عطال اللہ بکاہو کے دست مبارک پر بیعت کا شرف حاصل کر لیا ہے MTA cameras were allowed in the Fuzzle Mosque with permission of the newly elected Khalifa Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V then made a brief address. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi min ash rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawm Deen. Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'een Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'een Ehdina sirat al-mustaqeem Ehdina sirat al-mustaqeem Sirat al-lazina namta alayhim Fairi al-maghubi alayhim wal-dhalleen 
احباب جماعت سے صرف ایک درخواست ہے کہ آج کل دعاؤں پہ زور دیں دعاؤں پہ زور دیں دعاؤں پہ زور دیں بہت دعائیں کریں بہت دعائیں کریں بہت دعائیں کریں اللہ تعالیٰ اپنی تائید و نصرت فرمائے اور احمدیت کا کہ ایک قافلہ اپنی ترقیات کی طرف رواں دواں رہے آمین بیٹھ جائیں Khudur Anwar, Khalifa Tulmasi V, asked everyone to sit down. In an instant, the thousands who were present, whether they were in the mosque, in the complex, on the pavements, or on the roads around the mosque, everyone spontaneously took to the floor. This spectacle was incredible, like a wave in the ocean. The tide of humanity sat down immediately. This level of obedience and adherence shown to the call of the newly elected Khalifa was unprecedented in the modern day. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu Those who were outside the Fazl Mosque together with the millions of Jamaat members across the world took the oath of allegiance at his blessed hand. As soon as the choice of the Electoral College became known, it was universally felt as if comfort and consolation were descending upon every heart from heaven. On the 23rd of April, at Islamabad, Tilford, the funeral prayers over the beloved departed, led by the newly elected Khalifa and his interment later on the same day, were a deeply moving experience for everyone. An experience which was born of conflicting emotions, of grief and bereavement on the one hand, and steadfast submission to the divine will and a firm resolve to march forward in earnestness, giving of one's very best on the other. Hadrat Mirza Masru Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmisi V, was called to his exalted office at a mature age in the face of the most poignant tragedy of the death of Hadrat Khalifa Tulmisi IV, and by the grace and mercy of God, has proved himself an inexhaustible source of comfort and consolation to all members of the movement. He possesses a firm but gentle disposition, which is characterized chiefly by shyness and modesty, it has been observed, however, that when the occasion so demands, he does not fail to provide dashing leadership. From the beginning of his Khilafat, he has given proof of great zeal and drive in the pursuit of the objectives of the movement. One of the very first projects that he initiated on the 26th of July 2003 was the setting up of the Tahir Foundation in memory of Hadrat Khalifa Tulmisi IV the purpose of which was to push forward all the designs in which the late Khalifa Tulmasi had taken particular interest. Now, I want to make a statement in the end. Some people have also given me a statement. I also thought that the Khalifa Tulmasi is the Prophet of 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 the Prophet. ان کی تدوین اور اشاعت کا کام ہے تو یہ کافی وسیع کام ہے جس کے لیے ایک الگ ادارہ کے قیام کی ضرورت ہے تو اس سوچ کے بعد میں نے یہ فیصلہ کیا ہے کہ ایک ادارہ تاہر فاؤنڈیشن کے نام سے قائم کیا جائے اور اس کے انشاءاللہ ایک مجلس ہوگی بورڈ آف ڈائریکٹرز ہوگا جس جو بیس ممبران پر مشتمل ہوگا دعا کریں یہ جو کمیٹی بنیں گی اس کو اللہ تعالیٰ کام کرنے کی توفیق بھی دے اور ہر لحاظ سے وہ کام جو حضور رحم اللہ تعالیٰ کے بعض تحریرات کے ایسے ہیں جو بھی دنیا کے سامنے پیش کرنے کی ضرورت ہے ان کو مکمل کرنے کی توفیق ملے The institution of Khilafat Ahmadiyya started after the demise of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, on the 26th of May 1908. With the election of his first successor, Hadrat Mulana Nuruddin, as Khalifa Tulmasi I, on the 27th of May 1908. 
In anticipation of the hundred years of Ahmadiyya Khilafat, which were to be completed in 2008, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V made an announcement concerning the Thanksgiving celebration of the Khilafate Ahmadiyya Centenary. He put forth a spiritual plan before the members, which included prayers and a supererogatory fast every month, with the intention that may Allah keep the Ahmadiyya Khilafat established forever. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a truly global community, and Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V is by every measurement cosmopolitan in experience and steeped in erudition. He travels widely around the world to check up on the activities of the missions of the movement in those countries and to make an appraisal of the opportunities of further progress. One cannot help but be captivated when one is in his presence, whether on a one-on-one -on -one basis or amid a sea of thousands of people, he makes that personal connection all the time. He possesses an amazing personality that really overshadows almost everything else going on around him. Almost all Ahmadis or non-Ahmadis alike who have experienced him at close quarters understand the special spiritual luminosity he radiates. In August 2003, Khudur traveled outside the United Kingdom for the first time after becoming Khalifa Tulmasi. He traveled by road to Germany, breaking journey at Belgium, France and Holland. The main purpose of this blessed journey was to address the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya community in Germany and to meet the members who live in large numbers in those European countries. On the 3rd of October 2003, Khudur inaugurated the Beitel Foto Mosque, which is a magnificent architectural landmark in London. Allah Ta'ala ke fadl se, aaj inshallah Ta'ala, balke is waqt, Jumaa ke khutbe ke saath, is masjid ka, jis ka naam, Khalifat al-Musir Rabe, Rahimullah Ta'ala ne, بیت الفطور رکھا تھا افتتا کیا جا رہا ہے الحمدللہ It is Western Europe's biggest mosque complex with a capacity to accommodate 10,000 worshippers Adorned with a 15.5 meter dome the mosque is located in Morden on a 5.2 acre site the mosque complex provides the community with a central focal point for meetings, social and religious events. The community acquired the site in 1996 and the late Hadrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi IV, laid the foundation stone of the mosque on the 19th of October 1999. The opening of the mosque was extensively publicized in the British and international media and the inaugural function was attended by eminent personalities, including members of parliament, mayors, scholars, journalists and distinguished friends of the movement who were blessed with an inspiring spiritual address by Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V. On the 13th of March 2004, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V embarked upon a historic four-week tour of West African countries. This faith-inspiring tour covered Ghana, Burkina Faso, Benin and Nigeria in that order. He graced the annual conventions of all four countries and addressed the gatherings attended by thousands. This was a historic occasion when, for the first time, the addresses by Khalifa Tulmasi were broadcast live on MTA International from the soil of Africa. During this epic tour, many eminent personalities of African countries, including heads of state, ministers, parliamentarians and paramount chiefs, had audience with Hudur and attended the receptions given in his honor. <laughs> Tumultuous welcome greeted him everywhere.
He consistently attracted large crowds during this trip, some amongst the largest ever assembled in the Jamaat history of West Africa. In Ghana, on the 15th of March 2004, the President of the Republic of Ghana, John Agiekum Kufur, personally welcomed him in the country. The President also attended and addressed the annual gathering of the community in Ghana in Hudot's presence on the 18th of March 2004. I took to the lectern because I just want to tell all of you I'm one with you in expressing joy and happiness in welcoming His Holiness, who, as I say, is a Ghanaian, because it was here by his own autobiography, or is it the CV prepared for me by Mavi Wahabadam? It was here he started um, the mission, his mission to serve humanity in the uh, Ahmadi movement. In Burkina Faso, the Prime Minister Paramanga Ernest Yonli and President of the country, Mr. Blaise Kompaori, had an audience with him on the 26th of March 2004. Similarly, the President of Republic of Benin, Nike Fore Dudone Solio, invited him to his palace and exchanged thoughts on matters of mutual interest. It was the first ever tour by a Khalifa to Benin. The officials readily acknowledged educational, social as well as spiritual services rendered by the movement. Newspapers, radio and television gave wide coverage to his travels. This journey was a tremendous success in many respects. In fact, it heralded a new era of preaching in West Africa. In 2004, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmisi V inaugurated MTA2, the second channel of the community's satellite TV station. He is very mindful of the community's well-being and needs. From the very beginning of his Khilafat, he took a keen interest in reorganizing the daily schedules of MTA to cater for the needs of different time zones of the world. He personally chaired meetings with the MTA's scheduling department and some members of the MTA board to revamp the scheduling of the channel. This led to the idea of having a second channel to provide a better service at appropriate times to different parts of the world. Under Hudo's constant supervision and guidance, MTA2 finally became reality on the 23rd of April 2004. From the 21st of June 2004 to the 5th of July 2004, Hudor visited Canada, where he was given the privileges of a state VIP. Upon his arrival in Canada, he was greeted at the airport by various government officials, which included Judy Scro, Federal Minister of Immigration and Citizenship, Joe Volpe, Federal Minister of Human Resources, Jean Augustin, Federal Minister for Multiculturalism, and various other MPs and officials. The Federal Government Police Force escorted Hudor's motorcade throughout the visit. At a welcome reception held at Baitul Islam Mosque, His Worship Michael de Biase, the mayor of Vaughan City, presented the key of the city to Hudur. The focal point of this tour was the 28th Annual Convention of Canada, held on the 2nd to the 4th of July at the International Centre, Mississauga. Hudur's addresses to the convention were televised live on MTA International. The Prime Minister of Canada also sent a special message for the convention. The promised Messiah initiated a scheme in 1905 commonly known in the Jamaat as the Vasiat 
or the Will Scheme. This scheme was announced together with the announcement about the system of Khalafat in his book The Will. Under the Vasiat Scheme, devout Ahmadis who wish to become members of the scheme are required to attain higher spiritual changes in their life and commit a portion, not less than one-tenth, of their lifetime earnings and any property to the cause of Islam. By the year 2004, 38,000 devout Ahmadis had joined this blessed scheme. On the 1st of August 2004, during his concluding address to the International Annual Convention held in the UK, Khudur initiated a plan to get another 15,000 Ahmadis to join this scheme by 2005, which marks the centenary year of the scheme. <laughs> اپنی نسلوں کی زندگیوں کو پاک کرنے کے لیے شامل ہوں آگے آئیں اور کم از کم یہ کموں پیش اندازہ میں نے دیا تھا کم از کم پندرہ ہزار اس ایک سال میں نئی وسایا ہو جائیں تاکہ کم از کم پچاس ہزار وسایا تو ایسی ہوں جو ایک سو سال میں ہم کیسے رہیں گے ہوئیں تو ایسے مومن تو نکلیں کہا جا سکے کہ جنہوں نے خدا کے مسیح کی آواز پر لبیک کرتے ہوئے قربانیوں کے اعلیٰ میار قائم کیے he also said that it is his wish to include at least 50% of the earning members of the community to join this scheme. From the 16th of August 2004 to the 15th of September, Khudur travelled to Europe and graced the Ahmadiyya annual conventions of three European countries, starting with Germany. He arrived in Germany on the 17th of August and addressed their annual convention on all three days. The convention was held on the 20th, 21st and 22nd of August. On the 1st of September 2004, he set foot in Switzerland for the first time. A very warm welcome was extended to him by the Swiss officials and the Jamaat when he arrived at the Mahmoud Mosque in Zurich. During his visit, Khudur addressed the three-day annual convention of the Swiss Jamaat, which was held on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of September. This visit was very historic in two ways. Firstly, it was the first ever that a Swiss convention was graced by a Khalifa, and secondly, for the first time in the movement's history, the sermon of a Khalifa was broadcast live across the globe from the Swiss soil. On the 8th of September, Khudur arrived in Brussels, Belgium, where he addressed their three-day convention on the 10th, 11th and 12th of September. At the end of his tour, he briefly stayed in Holland from the 13th to the 15th of September. On the 30th of September 2004, Khudur went on a historic UK tour. The centerpiece of his visit was the inauguration of the Darul Barakat Mosque in Birmingham on the 1st of October. Alhamdulillah, ki aaj jo matam diya Britania ki is masjid jo Birmingham mein ki jamaat ne bahut sara hissa leke tamir ki hai, iski takmil hone par istata ho raha hai. The inaugural reception was attended by a large number of distinguished guests, including the Deputy Lord Mayor of Birmingham, members of the UK and European Parliament, scholars, journalists, businessmen, and people from other walks of life. The opening ceremony was shown live on MTA International, and extensive coverage was given in the local and national media. During this trip, 
Khudur also laid the foundation stones of two significant mosques. The first ceremony was held for the Al Mahdi Mosque in Bradford on the 2nd of October. The second ceremony was held on the 3rd of October for laying the foundation stone of the Nasser Mosque in Hartlepool. During this UK tour, as a gesture of benevolence and affection, Khudur accompanied all the missionaries of the movement appointed in the UK and their families for a picnic at Ilkley. He later went on to visit the community branches at the Lake District, Scunthorpe, Huddersfield, Manchester and Glasgow. On the 22nd of December 2004, Hudor travelled to France. The highlight of this tour was the annual Convention of France, which was held on the 26th, 27th and 28th of December, to coincide with the annual Convention of Cadian. During the convention, Khudur not only addressed the audiences present in France, but also addressed the gathering in Kadian. His addresses were relayed live from France on MTA International. Many eminent personalities, including the French President, Jacques Chirac, and the Prime Minister, Jean-Pierre Raffarin, sent special messages of goodwill and welcome, which were read at the Jalsa. During this trip, Hodor also paid an official visit to the famous palace, Chateau de Versailles. The visit was arranged through the French Ministry of Cultural Affairs and the Ministry of Internal Affairs. In January 2005, Hodor paid a visit to Ahmadi communities in Spain, he arrived in Spain on the 1st of January 2005. Ahmadis living in Spain got the opportunity of meeting with the exalted personage and benefiting from his sublime discourses. The most salient features of this tour were Hudur's addresses at the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya community in Spain. It was the first time in the history of Spain that a convention was graced by the presence of a Khalifa. During this trip on the 11th of September, Hudor visited Gibraltar, where he met the governor and commander-in-chief of Gibraltar, Sir Francis Richard, at Governor House. The meeting lasted for over half an hour, and various matters of mutual interest were discussed. During the same year, from the 26th of April to the 25th of May, Hudor travelled to East Africa. He visited Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. This was, again, a very successful visit. In Kenya, Khudur addressed their 40th annual convention on the 28th and 29th of April. Both the addresses were televised live across the globe on MTA International. This was the first ever live transmission of MTA International done from the soil of East Africa. The Vice President of Kenya, Honorable Moody Awori, also addressed the Jalsa and thanked Khudur on behalf of the Kenyan government for visiting Kenya and for the humanitarian services of the Jamaat in Kenya. While in Nairobi, Hudur also attended a reception given in his honour at the Nairobi Serenia Hotel, which was attended by various cabinet ministers and other eminent personalities of Kenya. Hudur arrived in Tanzania on the 8th of May 2005. <laughs> 
During his stay, he addressed the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya community in Tanzania. This was the first annual convention of the community in Tanzania graced by a Khalifa. On the 13th of May, Hudur met the Prime Minister of Tanzania, Honorable Friedrich T. Sume, at the Prime Minister House. The Prime Minister discussed various issues of mutual interest and was highly appreciative of the humanitarian services of the Jamaat during the meeting. On the 14th of May, Hudur was invited by the President of Tanzania, His Excellency William Makapa, to the State House. The President welcomed Hudur in Tanzania and praised the services of the Jamaat. Hudur arrived in Uganda on the 17th of May 2005. Hudur was welcomed at the airport by the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. The highlight of the tour was the annual convention of Uganda, which was addressed by Hudur on the 19th and 20th of May. This was a historic day for Uganda, as it was the first ever convention graced by a Khalifa. By the grace of Allah, that you are going to start, and you have already started, I should say, the 20th Jalsa Salana of Jamaat Ahmadiyya, Uganda. In June 2005, Hodor visited Canada. He arrived in Vancouver on the 4th of June 2005, where he was given the privileges of a state VIP by the Canadian government, and the Federal Police Force of Canada was appointed for Hodor's security during the trip. Various eminent personalities, including Canadian MPs and ministers, attended these ceremonies. And I can tell you, my friends, there is no more beautiful flower in our garden than those of our brothers and our sisters in the Ahmadiyya community. It is wonderful to be here. I know this convention will be a tremendous success, and I'm just honored to have an opportunity to be here with you today. During this visit, Hudur addressed the 29th Annual Convention of the Canada Jamaat held in Mississauga from the 24th of June to the 26th of June 2005. In August 2005, Hudur paid an eventful visit to Germany, Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Holland. He left London on the 22nd of August for Germany, breaking journey in Brussels, Belgium. The primary purpose of the Germany tour was to address their annual convention, which was held on the 26th, 27th and 28th of August in Mannheim, Germany. On the 6th of September, Hudur left for Denmark. His arrival at the Nusrat Yaham Mosque, Copenhagen, was widely covered by the national media. Hudur also answered questions by the press and gave an interview to Denmark's national TV channel, TV2. On the 7th of September, a reception was given in Hudur's honor, which was attended by the Minister of Immigrants and Integration. Members of Parliament, journalists, professors, doctors, artists and various other important personalities. On the 11th of September, Hudur arrived in Sweden to attend and address the annual convention of the Scandinavian countries, which was held on the 16th, 17th and 18th of September. A reception was given in Hudur's honor on the 17th of September, which was attended by a number of distinguished guests from different walks of life, including 14 members of parliament and eight police chiefs. On the 18th of September, Hudur arrived in Oslo, Norway. 
where a reception was given in his honor on the 24th of September at the Grand Hotel. Hodor was welcomed by the mayor of Oslo and the representative of the Prime Minister of Norway and other prominent public figures of Norway. The 1st of October 2005 is a huge milestone in the history of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, as on this day, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V inaugurated the Jamia Ahmadiyya UK, which is the community's first college of theological studies in Europe. The community is running similar colleges in Kadian, Rabwa, Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Indonesia and Canada. But there was no institute in Europe to cater for the needs of European students. Khudur <laughs> took personal interest in establishing this college and the entire project was set up under his direct guidance. On the 11th of November 2005, Hudur inaugurated the newly built Nasser Mosque in Hartlepool, the United Kingdom. This was the first ever mosque built in that part of the country. City officials, newspaper and TV reporters attended the opening ceremony and it was widely publicized in the media. What comes to greet him? In November 2005, Hudur paid a visit to Mauritius, which lasted from the 28th of November to the 10th of December. The primary purpose of the visit was to meet the Jamaat members, most of whom were meeting Hudur for the first time, and to address the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya community in Mauritius, which was held on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of December. During the visit, the president of Mauritius, Sir Anarud Jagnoth, met Hudur. This meeting was held at the State House in Port Louis, during which various matters were discussed. The Vice President of Mauritius, Mr. Raouf Bundun also met Hudur in a separate meeting held at the Vice President House in Sonyak. Throughout the visit, the national media gave prominent coverage of Hudur's activities in Mauritius. On the 11th of December 2005, Hudur embarked upon a most epochal and historic tour of India, which was spiritually uplifting for the entire Jamaat. It was a very historic tour in a lot of ways. The year 2005 is very significant in the history of the movement, as it marks the completion of 100 years to the initiation of the Vasiyat scheme, and according to the lunar calendar, the 100 years of the institution of khilafat e ahmadiyya were also completed during this year. It was therefore befitting for a convention to be held on the soil of Kadian, the town where Khilafat Ahmadiyya started. With Hudur's arrival, Kadian was once again blessed with the presence of a Khalifa. Thousands of Ahmadis from around the world converged upon the hamlet of Kadian, and a tide of humanity greeted Hudur. It was the first time in the history of the Jamaat that live transmissions of Hudur's sermons, addresses and other activities from Kadian were shown across the globe on MTA International. The voice that was raised from Kadian over a hundred years ago was once again raised from Kadian with new splendor and magnitude and reached the ends of the earth.
The faith-inspiring annual convention of Kadyan was held on the 26th, 27th and 28th of December, which was attended by over 70,000 people. Special intercity trains were run by the authorities to facilitate the smooth arrival of guests. During the visit, many eminent personalities, including heads of other religious communities, ministers, parliamentarians and scholars, had audience with Hudur and attended the convention. Hudur also led the Idul Adha prayers in Kadian. It was the first time after the partition of India in 1947 that a Khalifa led the Eid service in Kadian. <laughs> this history-making and spiritually exhilarating tour ended on the 17th of January 2006 when Hudur returned to London. For four weeks in 2006, from the 4th of April to the 15th of May, Hudur visited the far eastern countries of Singapore, Australia, Fiji, New Zealand and Japan. For the first time ever from the soils of each of these countries, a Khalifa's addresses and sermons were transmitted live across the globe on MTA International. In Singapore, Hudur delivered a historic Friday sermon, which was attended by a number of Ahmadis from the neighboring countries of Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea and Brunei. इस मौके से फायदा उठाते हुए मैं अपने इंडोनेशियन बहन भाइयों से कहता हूं कि अपनी कौम के अहमदियों को तसल्ली दें कि सब्र करें और सब्र का दामन कभी हाथ से ना छोड़ें बस उससे मदद मांगें इंशाल्लाह वो कभी आपको जाया नहीं करेगा कभी जाया नहीं करेगा कभी जाया नहीं करेगा ओले करना ही तो त्रुस पर उस बर्दा पड़ा ही ये तिरा कर पड़ा मिन्या न्या कर कलियन तिरा कर पड़ा मिन्या न्या कर कलियन दा तिरा कर पड़ा मिन्या न्या कर कलियन in Australia, the focal point of Hudur's visit was his attendance and addresses to the annual convention on the 15th, 16th and 17th of April. Hudur also graced a reception given in his honour in Canberra on the 19th of April, which was attended by a large number of diplomats, members of parliament and other important personalities. In Sydney, Hudur laid the foundation stone of the Khilafat Centenary Hall. Hudur arrived in Fiji on the 25th of April. He was welcomed by various government officials at the airport, where he also addressed a press conference. Later, he went to the President House to meet the Vice President of Fiji, the Honorable Ratu Joni Madrawiwi, who was also the acting President of the country at the time. The two-day annual convention of the Fijian community was also planned to coincide with Hudur's visit on the 28th and 29th of April. The gathering was addressed on both days by Hudur. While in Fiji, Hudur also paid a visit to the historic Dateline in Taverni, which is considered as a corner of the earth. 
में अभी डॉन है कुछ में अभी शुरू रात है A reception was also given in Hutorzona which was attended by a large number of politicians including the acting president the honorable Ratu Joni Madraiwiwi diplomats eminent Fijian scholars religious leaders businessmen and other distinguished persons On the 4th of May 2006 Hutor arrived in New Zealand New Zealand was formally established in 1987 and has a membership of just over 220 people. He addressed the community's annual convention on the 5th and 6th of May. Today as the people were greater at number and the resources were Islam could be Hodor left New Zealand and for the last leg of his journey arrived in Tokyo on the 8th of May. He attended a reception given in his honor on the 9th of May. The reception was attended by Japanese members of parliament, ambassadors, politicians, professors, police officers and other prominent personalities from Tokyo. Hodor also addressed the community's two-day annual convention in Nagoya on the 12th and 13th of May. During his stay in Japan, Hodor paid a visit to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum on the 14th of May. From the 3rd to the 20th of June 2006, Hodor visited Belgium, Germany and Holland. In Belgium, Hodor addressed the concluding session of their 3-day annual convention on the 4th of June in Brussels. In Germany, He graced and addressed the ishtamas of Khudam al-Ahmadiyya and Lajna Imala which were held in Mannheim on the 9th, 10th and 11th of June. Isliye hamesha ek baat ye yaad rakhe ke Ahmadi taliba ka buniyadi farz ye hai ke apne khuda ko kabhi na bhule. Usko hamesha yaad rakhe aur uski ibadat ki taraf tawajjuh dein. In Holland Hodor blessed the last day of their three-day annual convention and addressed the concluding session on the 18th of June in Nunspiet. In 2005, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community United Kingdom purchased a 208-acre site in Hampshire, UK. The site was named Hadigatul Madi by Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V. And on the 28th, 29th, and 30th of July 2006, the International Annual Convention of the Ahmadiyya Community was held at a newly acquired site. From the 18th of December 2006 to the 7th of January 2007, Hodor visited Germany together with a brief stay in Belgium and Holland. In Germany, Hodor addressed the annual gathering of Kadian live via satellite link. on MTA International from Frankfurt on the 28th of December Lekin Allah Taala ki madad se jab aap duaein karte hue aur iman par mazbooti se qaim rehte hue baghair ghabraye ye safar jari rakhenge to har manzil par pahunch kar aapko Allah Taala ke fazlon ke azim ushan nazare nazar aayenge inshaallah aur raaste ki koi rok A large number of Ahmadis were present in Frankfurt to listen to Hudur, and over 25,000 people were present in Kadian for the gathering. Since the beginning of his Khilafat, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V. is very passionate about spreading the message of Ahmadiyyat the true Islam to the Arab world from where Islam started under his direct supervision and guidance the community's satellite tv station MTA International started work to launch a dedicated arabic channel under the dynamic directions of the Khalifa Tulmasi 
and in consequence of his continuous humble supplications to the Divine. The efforts bore fruit, and on the 23rd of March 2007, Hudur inaugurated MTA as Salisa Al Arabiya, the third channel of MTA International, which transmits programs in Arabic 24 hours a day. MTA 3 Al Arabiya ka ijra bhi ho raha hai. Allah Taala jalt Arab dunya ko bhi ke bhi sine khole aur wo zamane ke Imam ko pehchan le. This is truly a remarkable milestone in the history of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Initially, the channel started on Nile Sat for Middle East only, then was moved to Hotbird and CSAT in March 2008 for greater coverage in the Middle East and Europe. In February 2008, it also started transmission for the North American sector on AMC3 satellite. From the 18th of August to the 8th of September 2007, Hudur toured Holland, Germany and France. In his Friday sermon of the 24th of August, which was delivered at Nunspeet, Holland, he condemned the Dutch writer Geert Wilders and gave answers to Wilders' allegations against Islam. और कीने ने अंधा कर दिया हो, उनको सामने की चीज भी नजर नहीं आती। इनको ये नजर आ रहा है कि यही एक ऐसा दीन है जो दलील से हर एक काम बंद करने वाला है। इसलिए दलील से काम नहीं बनेगा, वो तो इनके पास है नहीं। मुल्क के कानून पास करके सख्ती से काम करो, तो फिर ही बात बनेगी। in Germany, Hudur addressed on all three days of their annual convention, which took place from the 31st of August to the 2nd of September 2007. After the inception of the third channel of MTA International, and owing to rapid expansion of its services, Hudur approved a plan to build a new MTA complex adjacent to the Beitel Futter Mosque. With Allah's grace, this complex, equipped with the latest technology, was inaugurated by Hudur on the 10th of December 2007. It includes a large studio, a news studio, an audio studio, translation suites, editing suites, graphics and animation suites, and the latest IT management and administration facilities. Hadrat Mirza Masru Ahmad, Halifa Tulmasi V's energetic, active approach to his office and immense spiritual devotion has enhanced the importance of Khilafat in both the Ahmadiyya and the non-Ahmadiyya circles. Through his extensive world travel, he has shown the true face of Islam to the world, has spiritually elevated the global Ahmadiyya community, and has brought them closer to their Creator. May Allah strengthen his hands and grant him a long and prosperous life, leading the community. Amin.